The sun can provide some spectacular photographing opportunities, but it's also the most dangerous object to look at. Stay tuned for information on how to safely look at the sun and how to take photos and videos of it through a spotting scope. Looking directly at the sun with a spotting scope, camera, or your eyes requires some protection. This is a solar light polymer filter that produces a yellow-orange image. Simply install it over the objective lens of the spotting scope and your phone is protected from the sun as well as your eyes if you want to look directly through the eyepiece. If you plan on looking at the total solar eclipse, the solar filter must stay on the scope until the moon completely covers the sun and be installed once a sliver of sun begins to reappear. If you're doing this on a windy day, try adding some weight to stabilize the scope and tripod. The blue band is a hot cold leg and arm wrap. Weight can also be added to the tripod hook. However, this might not be enough to keep the image from shaking, so collapsing the legs and making the tripod as short as possible might be necessary. The phone's image stabilizer might also help to some extent. First, install the solar filter. Lining up the scope with the sun is a bit tricky since looking down the length of the scope can hurt your eyes. Instead, look at the spotting scope shadow on the ground. Move the tripod head up and down, left and right until the shadow is smallest. Set the scope to the smallest zoom before you begin. Then look through the eyepiece, making small adjustments until you see the sun. Next is the focusing routine. This image is a bit overexposed. You'll need to fix that first if your image is worse than this. The focus peaking green outline says the focus is close, but I'll digitally zoom in to make sure. We're looking for a crisp, high contrast look to the edge of the sun's disc. Another thing to help with the focusing is sunspots, which are the dark areas on the sun. Keep adjusting the focus until they look clear. There will be times when sunspots are not prominent. When that happens, you'll have to rely on the disc edge to focus. When the image looks good, it's time to take photos. Now I'll look at the sun at 30x in the focusing routine again. And at 60x. Just like with the moon, you won't have much time to take pictures when zoomed in this far before the sun begins moving out of view. Taking videos is a similar experience to taking photos. At 20x, it took the sun just under 4 minutes to cross the field of view, similar to the moon. These videos were taken with the phone's image stabilizer turned on, so there was some cropping. At 60x, the sun nearly fills the screen vertically. You might be wondering if the sun can be seen or imaged through an overcast sky. The answer is, maybe. On another day, the sun only looked like a bright spot when looking up and using an unfiltered camera. The disk was visible when using the solar filter, even with this much cloud cover. A slower shutter speed and higher ISO will be needed versus the settings that we used earlier. There were times when clouds thickened and the sun looked less defined. During the annular solar eclipse on October 14, 2023, the sky was overcast at my location for most of the event, but a brief window of mostly clear skies allowed for these images to be taken with a DSLR camera at 250 millimeters. I could still see the moon covering part of the sun, even with thin clouds moving in. Hopefully, You'll have luck seeing and photographing the solar eclipse and seeing sunspots. An upcoming video will cover the Orion Nebula. When it's ready, it will appear in the upper right corner. I hope to see you there.